You did it! Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, class of 2020. And remember, never stop learning. It's not just your profession, it's a lifelong joy. Congratulations, class of 2020 from Professor Higgins. Congratulations, not just on having completed this year, but on having completed it with such good grace, flexibility, and adaptability. We all appreciate it. On behalf of the members of the Teaching and Learning Lab, we wanted to say, Congratulations! Congratulations. Class of 2020! 2020. 2020. <laughs> we wish you all the best. Congratulations, graduates. I hope you've had time to reflect a little bit on everything you've achieved at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, but even more importantly, to imagine everything that you are going to achieve in the next phase of your careers. Parting ways in March was difficult for all of us, but I've been deeply impressed by the ability of each and every one of you to adapt, to change, to embrace online learning, and to juggle your professional and your personal lives, and to do so with grace, and even more than that, with good humor. I have to tell you, I'm not surprised. I was fortunate to spend three wonderful years as the president in residence at the Graduate School of Education. And I learned a lot um, about this very, very special community. Apian Way has always shined with optimism about what individuals, what societies can accomplish through education. And the world needs that optimism, I think, now more than ever. What can school look like in the future? What should school look like in the future? You're going to play a crucial role in helping to answer these questions and in charting a course for the next century of education across this nation and indeed across the entire world. I don't think anybody is better suited to doing that than you are. Uh, you've been well educated, you've been inspired, You've been mentored by some of the best faculty in the world. You've not only learned from men, you've learned from each other. It's going to be exciting to see what you're going to do going forward. I can't wait. Thank you to each and every one of you, not just for being our students, but for what you're going to do for the world in the future. Congratulations and best of luck. Good afternoon. My name is Bridget Long, and I am the Dean of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to this year's commencement ceremony, especially our 715 graduating students hailing from over 50 countries. Though today's ceremony is not what we anticipated only months ago, it is still an important time to recognize the individual and group accomplishments of the class of 2020. We may be physically distant, but we are gathered virtually and in spirit to celebrate and wish you well as you enter the world with the crucial mission of improving education. I dearly hope that we will be together in person again soon so that I can congratulate you in person. And to the family and friends of graduates joining us today, I send you a special welcome. No one makes it to graduation alone, and I share in our students' gratitude toward you for all the ways that you have supported their journeys, especially during the unexpected twists of the spring semester. I would also like to thank all of the faculty and staff who have worked tirelessly through the year as teachers, colleagues, mentors, supports, and friends. I know many of them are joining us today in celebration. Each year, I'm amazed to hear the stories and to learn about the distances and obstacles our graduates have overcome to study at HGSE. As I told those of you who attended orientation last August, you also have the honor of being the centennial class of HGSE, marking 100 years after our founding in 1920. While being the centennial class is a label bestowed to you based on timing, I can say that now you've definitely earned this special title. 
This ended up being a momentous year indeed, though not exactly how any of us would have guessed. I am in awe of this class's resiliency, dedication, and sense of community. I've heard numerous stories of the support and generosity you have given each other, each other and other members of the HDSE community. And I have been impressed by the many of you I've had the opportunity to speak with as you have navigated the current storm and considered your next steps. You truly are a special group. So I, as well as many others, take special pride in celebrating your accomplishments today. Today's ceremony will begin with an address by our commencement student speaker, followed by the presentation of student awards, including our Intellectual Contribution Awards, Marshall Awards, and the Phyllis Strimling Award. Academic Dean Noni Lasso will then announce the winner of the Morningstar Award for Excellence in Teaching. Finally, I will share a few words before it's off to your respective robing and diploma ceremonies. To get things started, I would like to introduce our student speaker, Philip Chu. Philip is a master's candidate in our technology innovation and education program. His coursework and projects have been focused on the research design and use of assessments, developmental theories, and technologies to meaningfully measure and support student learning and their post-secondary planning. After Harvard, he hopes to continue building education products and programs that expand access to learning, testing, and networking opportunities. Please join me in welcoming Philip Chu. Thanks, Nilong. Long. Faculty, staff, family, friends, masters, and doctoral colleagues of the Harvard Graduate School of Education Class of 2020, welcome to your final day of HGSE online meetings. As you can see, this meeting has been recorded. I want to begin by congratulating everyone, the administrative and support teams, the faculty and teaching teams, the friends, families, and communities of this class, and the class of 2020, well done. Well done on staying the course through all the transitions and remaining committed to finishing well. Well done on maintaining high expectations for yourselves and for each other while extending just as much grace whenever possible. I'm going to begin with a brief moment of silence in remembrance of those who have passed directly and indirectly to COVID-19, of those still on the front lines and sidelines of the fight, and of Ahmaud Aubrey, whose death reminds us that in 2020, the color of black skin still draws the line between innocent until proven guilty and guilty until proven innocent. Silence, the sound of being present, but not showing up. I'm the son of immigrants, the youngest of four, but the firstborn of my family on American soil. So that made me my family's first citizen of the United States. For us, being an American citizen meant opening doors previously closed to us. Your story may not be the same as mine, but we each share in the tapestry of struggles to belong in the remembered narrative we call history. Citizenship, the means to not be afraid of feeling like you don't belong, to not be afraid of being told where you can or cannot go, and to not be afraid of being told what you can or cannot do. In my community of mostly first-generation college students whose parents speak limited English, education was seen as our one-way ticket to leave the struggle of not being from here and to go places where many of our ancestors were not welcomed. Education was our means of learning how to walk and talk like those who close doors and silence voices so that when we are through, we'll be the one keeping the doors open for those unwelcomed and mics up for those unheard before us. Education, the means to not be afraid of feeling like you don't belong, to not be afraid of being told where you can or cannot go, and to not be afraid of being told what you can or cannot do. This academic year began with Dean Long reminding us that, contrary to the possible initial shock and wondering if the admissions office made a mistake by sending you an admissions offer, they did not make a mistake. You belong here, she asserted, and she was right. But belonging and showing up are not the same. Belonging is being in the room and given the opportunity and platform to speak and to be heard. Showing up is the follow through. I thought that once I arrived at HCSE, I was going to take on all the challenges of education that I came here to tackle and share my perspectives in the academic discourse whenever I could. Yet I quickly realized the sound of my own silence. In Tech Ethics, a course with over 600 students across all of Harvard, a debate on the existence of God ensued from our discourse on the source of value, meaning, and purpose of human life. If there were ever a question I have spent more time thinking on than any other, 
This was it. I wanted to join the debate by sharing that our seemingly inexplicable intuition that we each have value, meaning, and purpose is founded on and points to the reality that there is a good God who has created us with a foreknown purpose and we all have redeemed value in Jesus. Instead of using my voice to share what was evidently the minority position in the class, I sat silently as the discourse sputtered to a whimper. You see, I belonged in that room, but I did not show up. During an evening with Professor Lorcia Garcia Peña, she shared with an intimate group of us that the mere act of showing up to spaces and conversations where people who look and sound like you were not always welcome is a direct act of protest against the voices of past and present that tries to silence yours. When you don't show up by speaking up, who will? I am confident we each came to HCSE to learn to change the world, one classroom, one school, one community, and one publication at a time. Yet while we learn to change the world, the world continues to be changing around us. These days, Asian Americans like myself are starkly reminded of how quickly we can be told to speak up as the token mythical model minority for someone else's agenda on one day, and just as quickly be told to go back to where you came from as the mythical source of a global pandemic the next day, which for the record, on both counts, we are not. HCSD, now that we are done with our program of study and after all the celebrations, albeit virtual for now, we will be re-entering a more uncertain and strained world where educators are on the front lines and sidelines of ensuring all people have the knowledge, skills, and resources to recover from loss and to persist to thrive in their lives. As we go forth, we must remember the voices and faces who cannot be heard or seen where we will be. While it may not be immediately evident to us now, more doors are open to us than closed. Yet those same doors remain closed for many others. So my hope and charge for us is that we embrace this privilege with humility, that we use what we have learned to raise voices and open doors, to hear and welcome those who, out of circumstances beyond their own control, have been silenced and kept out, to show up and speak up for those who could not and still cannot. You most certainly belong in whatever seat you will take next. Take that space and own it. And as you do, Make space for others to do the same. HGSE Class of 2020, we have learned to change the world by committing to learning that brings about change to our own world first. Now, let's go forth and do the good work of changing the world for the better together. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, for your message. Congratulations on being chosen by our selection committee as this year's student speaker. Congratulations to the amazing Harvard Graduate School of Education Class of 2020. Hello graduates, Class of 2020 from HGSE. Professor Dick Light here. This year was an adventure. It was a joy to teach you. I hope for each of you this was a memorable year. You will never forget it. I will never forget you. Congratulations, class of 2020. Learn on, fail forward, cultivate your joy. 2020 certainly threw you a curveball, but you hit it out of the park. Bravo. And to all the proud parents, this day is especially for you. Thank you for all you've done to prepare your children for this moment. Your hard work, your support, and your sacrifices have paid off tremendously. I hope you all enjoy this day. Congratulations. Congratulations. I will now turn to recognize several members of the class of 2020 for their unique contributions to our community. For the 14th consecutive year, HGSE is recognizing a student from each master's program with an intellectual contribution award. Master students were given the opportunity to nominate a fellow student who most inspired their learning and intellectual inquiry over the course of the year. These lists were then reviewed by the master's program directors who selected the honorees. I am very pleased to introduce the 13 recipients of the 2020 Intellectual Contribution Award. For 
Arts and Education, Jessa Ray Richards. For Education Policy and Management, Kwame Adams. For Higher Education, Kirsten Robinson. For the Human Development and Psychology Program, Phoebe Co. For the International Education and Policy Program, Felicity Burgess. For the Language and Literacy Program, Eliza Harris. For the Learning and Teaching Program, Tomihiro Ono. For the Mind, Brain, and Education Program, Sam Z.M. Chan. For the Prevention, Science, and Practice Program, Ella Wexler Mathai. For School Leadership, Stephen Askar. For the Special Studies Program, Arushi Mittal. For the Teacher Education Program, Melanie Shea. And for the Technology, Innovation, and Education Program, Alexander Brady. Congratulations to our Intellectual Contribution Award winners. It is now time to present the 2020 Commencement Marshals. Commencement Marshals are elected by their peers for their leadership, their involvement in the HGSE community, and their commitment to service. They are honored as exemplary role models and representatives of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Two marshals are elected from each of the graduating doctoral programs. One marshal is elected from the CAS program, one from the Harvard Teacher Fellows program, and one from each of the 13 master's programs. This year's commencement marshals from the research doctoral program, the EDD Marshal, Mong Neo. Also from the research doctoral program, the PhD Marshal, Daphne Penn. From the education leadership doctoral program, James Mercer. And Mariel Novas. From the Certificate of Advanced Studies, Margaret Chumley. From the Arts and Education Program, Lillian Gottlieb. From Education Policy and Management, Michelle Vaughn Lopez. From the Harvard Teacher Fellows Program, Jerry Navillil. From Higher Education, Donna Reem. From the Human Development and Psychology Program, Ashna Badar. From the International Education Policy Program, Wenkanesh Reedy Malapu Reedy. From the Language and Literacy Program, Emily Allen. From Learning and Teaching, Karan Loda. From Mind, Brain, and Education, Adfer Mazufer. From Prevention, Science, and Practice, Matthew Clemens. From School Leadership, Morgan Best. From Special Studies, G. 
Ji Yanchen Wu. From Teacher Education, Bobby Demetra Hampton. From Technology, Innovation, and Education Program, Duna Tatar. Congratulations to all of our commencement marshals. It is now my pleasure to present the Phyllis Strimling Award. This award was created in 2000 to honor Phyllis Strimling, a HGSE alumna from the class of 1989 and the former director of the Radcliffe Seminars Program. The award was created by former Radcliffe Seminar faculty, including Holly Weeks and Rob Scalia. I would like to thank Phyllis, Holly, and Rob for their steadfast support of our students. The Phyllis Strimling Award recognizes an HGSE student who works to advance society by advancing women, demonstrates inclusive leadership and is inspirational to others, promotes community as a management approach, and demonstrates the ability to employ multiple perspectives and sound decision-making. This year, the Shrimling Award took the unusual step of granting two awards. The winners are Nia T. Evans, a master's candidate in education policy and management, and Allison Jegla, a master's candidate in the higher education program. Prior to joining HGSE, Nia Evans worked in the National Women's Law Center in Washington, D.C., where she led race and gender justice campaigns. Nia's research will be featured in the Smithsonian National Museum of American History's exhibit on girlhood as a part of their celebration of the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. After graduation, Nia plans to pursue a career expanding the platform of those not traditionally included in policymaking and to one day run for public office. Our second Strimling Award winner, Allison Jegla, is a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. She's a vice president for program development at the Joyce Ivy Foundation, a nonprofit that provides pre-college summer program scholarships, mentorship, and support to high achieving young women from the Midwest. During her time at HGSE, Allison focused on undermatching, the phenomenon of highly qualified low-income students going to less selective colleges and other contemporary challenges at American colleges and universities. Please join me in congratulating this year's Phyllis Strimling Award winners, Nia Evans and Allison Jegla. I am now happy to introduce Academic Dean Noni Lasso, who will present an important annual award recognizing a member of the faculty for excellence in teaching. Thank you, Bridget. I'm just delighted to be with you today to present the 2020 Morningstar Family Teaching Award. This award was established in 2000 with a gift from Faith Morningstar, an HGSE alumna, and her husband, the Honorable Richard Morningstar, an alumnus of the college. Faith's experience as a student here inspired her and her family to create an award that would not only recognize great teaching, but also those faculty members who helped to create a supportive environment for our students. On behalf of everyone at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, I would like to express my gratitude to the Morningstar family for their support. The Morningstar recipient is chosen each year based on nominations by HGSE students. The award includes a monetary prize and recognition on a plaque in Longfellow Hall. This year, 334 students submitted nominations for a total of 61 of our faculty members. This outpouring of praise is a testament to the premium members of this community place on teaching and mentorship. And while this is never an easy decision, one faculty member's nominations did stand out among the rest. I'd like to share a few excerpts from the nominations for this year's winner. This faculty member was praised for an imaginative approach to classroom instruction and a dedication to continuously improving his pedagogical craft. One student noted his reflections on his own teaching journey embodies the mantra of learning being a lifetime pursuit. Many students appreciated his ability to convey challenging topics in unconventional ways. 
One student wrote, he has a performative streak for pedagogy. His demonstrations frequently included objects like Play-Doh and Slinkies. His classroom demeanor is inspiring and frankly, hugely entertaining. Yet as one student states, to consider him simply an educator is an understatement. Many submissions focused on the faculty member's care for and commitment to his students, describing him as endlessly available for his willingness to organize lunch series and additional advising hours and study sessions. Students were particularly grateful for this faculty member's support during the challenging events of the spring semester, making his online class something students, quote, actively looked forward to each week, unquote. As one student wrote, he has transitioned into this moment of uncertainty with grace and skill. Without further ado, I am delighted to share that this year's Morningstar Award winner is Andrew Ho, a professor who teaches on educational measurement and statistics. Andrew, thank you for your excellent work teaching and advising and for your caring, respectful, and enthusiastic commitment to our students. Please join me in congratulating Andrew Ho. I've got a feeling that you will make a difference in kids' lives, that you will make a difference in kids' lives, that you will make a difference in kids' kids' lives. We celebrate you, Harvard Graduate School of Education, class of 2020. Marmus, congratulations on your graduation. You're going to be doing great things in the years ahead. Congratulations, class of 2020. Special shout out to the TEP cohort, to the ethnic studies crew, to the radical healing crew from the spring, and to my 3D dinner crew. Lots of love from Dr. V and Canella. Congratulations to you, the resilient, the indefatigable, the unforgettable HGSE class of 2020. Hi, class of 2020. This is Candace Bocala. Happy graduation. Never stop learning. Congratulations again to the class of 2020, HGSC Centennial Class. You are building on our long history. 100 years after our founding, HGSC is a vibrant community of dedicated, skillful, and ambitious people with the shared mission of improving the world through education. And though even a few months ago, we would not have imagined the changes caused by the pandemic, realized that even HCSE's presence and role today was not imagined at our founding. In fact, anyone from our early years would be shocked at how we have evolved and matured as a school. The story of HCSE is a story of pivotal decisions, of meeting challenges from within and without, and is a story of tremendous growth and reinvention. We have changed as our country and world have changed at a time when universities questioned whether education schools were necessary, HGSC advocated successfully for education to be recognized as a profession in its own right and to be a specialized body of knowledge distinct from other areas of intellectual inquiry. It was people here who pushed to be inside schools, to be connected to learners, educators, and communities, not just researchers sitting in the ivory tower. And it was people here who were courageous enough and bold enough to question the deeply held assumption that only some students could learn. All means all. And our community has demonstrated in hundreds of ways how success is possible, regardless of background, ability, or context. And we have broadened views of intelligence and education to include social and emotional learning, moral development, and civic engagement. Now, I bring up HGSE's history today to encourage you to look ahead. Graduating classes before you could never have envisioned the change they would help to bring. Certainly, we are living in the midst of tremendous upheaval, which has spurred innovation and new ideas, but also exposed long-standing inequities in distressing ways. 
If the future is what we create, then you, the class of 2020, will surely be important in determining the pathway ahead for all of us, even if we can't see that future just yet. As we reflect on the past several months, our lives have changed in immeasurable ways, especially when it comes to schooling. The world has seen with new eyes just how essential and underappreciated educators are. As Shonda Rhimes famously tweeted, been homeschooling a six-year-old and an eight-year-old for one hour and 11 minutes. Teachers deserve to make a billion dollars a year or a week. And then there are those of us who might identify with this sentiment from another of my favorite memes. Consider it a note from a parent to their children's teachers. You lied. My kids are not a joy to have in class. And while humor has been an important way for many of us to sustain ourselves, there has been much greater lessons for society about the important role of education. As our current circumstances have made clear, schools are more than just physical buildings that provide academic content. Educators do more than just stimulate minds. Community-based organizations, often interwoven into the activities of our schools and families, are essential to the fabric of our lives. And equity and access to educational opportunity are even more critical in this rapidly changing world. With more than 50 million children in the United States alone out of school for months, the learning loss, especially for those with special needs, has been severe. Add to that the fact that millions have gone without regular access to food provided by school lunches, without the safety of adult supervision and after-school programs, and without reliable internet connectivity. Altogether, the effects of this pandemic could hobble an entire generation, as a recent editorial in the New York Times described. We should take note that the word education in Mandarin has two characters. One character means to teach and the other to nurture. And the two together make the word education. Through this pandemic, many more are seen clearly that education is not only the foundation for opportunity and growth, but that educators also provide crucial emotional and social support, guide development in numerous ways, and are an integral part of our social safety net. And we are all coming to terms with the realization that the mark of this pandemic is not temporary. Our way of life will not go back to the old normal and these setbacks will not be quickly resolved. As we look to fall and consider the needs of our students, I was recently reminded by a friend and local educator, it's not just content gaps that we have to worry about, it's also emotional gaps. This is a major turning point for education and we are witnesses to it. Graduates, today as you transition to the next chapter of your life, I encourage you to tap into your innovative and entrepreneurial spirits and to be more than just a spectator. Especially at this moment in history, your contributions could not be needed more. Consider this a call to action. My voice, along with many others who are already working tirelessly to confront the challenges students of all ages are facing, which have only become more urgent. And I know that includes many of you already. As you consider your next steps, let me leave you with three quick words of advice. First is, don't wait. I realize we're all living in a world of great uncertainty and a long list of things that seem beyond our control. But I am reminded by one of my favorite quotes by a writer named Alan Paul. Life itself is controlled chaos and success depends on navigating it rather than waiting for things to be perfect. Now, I saved this quote several years ago, but it could not be more relevant today. Even under the most imperfect circumstances, you can make a contribution. Even if the challenges seem insurmountable, there are things you can do to help. Some of you will use this opportunity to do new things, to try out new ideas, and to make reforms that have long been needed. I know each of you is experiencing your own worries, upheavals, and brushes with illness, but even if your contribution at this time is simply a kind word or an offer of assistance to one person, that is still progress. Which brings me to my second point. We need to do this together. Even though we may be physically apart, let us not be socially distant. During the last several months, I have been incredibly heartened by the ways our community has shown resilience, thoughtfulness, and care. And I am confident we will thrive in our next steps if we continue to work together, joining with colleagues from around the world. 
take note of the fact that the field of education embodies a complicated network of teachers and principals, nonprofits and foundations, government bodies and community-based organizations. Real change, or the idea of collective impact as advanced by John Kanya, can happen when people are able to work across silos in pursuit of a common goal. Those silos may be long-standing divides that stand in the way of improving practice, but we should also give fresh thought to new potential partners and collaborations. To name just one example, we should strengthen ties between healthcare and education, not just in our fight against COVID, but because we know that healthy children are better able to learn. The challenges our students face permeate every part of society, and so it will take working together to make real movement in addressing those issues. As stated in the old African proverb, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. And no, even though today marks your graduation, you will always be a part of the HDSE family. You are about to join the nearly 30,000 alumni of the Harvard Graduate School of Education and will be lifelong members of a community like no other. May you always stay connected and find HDSE a source of inspiration, supports, and collaborators. Finally, my third point is to encourage you to entertain what was previously unimaginable. This brings me back to HDSC Centennial. Now, 100 years ago, do you think our founders would have imagined how much we would have grown? Today, we reach across the disciplines with activity both inside and outside of schools for students around the world of every profile. Or that our school would have chosen the first female dean at Harvard, Patricia Graham or would have an African-American woman as dean right now. To go back 100 years, people would have thought that was impossible. And as we have recently been shown, this is a time when old assumptions have been thrown out the door, a time when we've seen dramatic changes to everyday life none of us would have believed as we welcomed in the new year of 2020. What if this is also a time like no other when we imagine something new for our students and their families? when the will is finally there to address longstanding problems that can no longer be ignored. Let new ideas combine with evidence on what works and come together in new collaborations, breaking down traditional barriers because we're all in this together. In closing, what you are doing is important. And even though this year has taken a dramatic turn, know that your chosen field has become even more significant and what you choose to do can and will make a difference. Whether you choose to work inside or outside of a school, with our youngest learners or our oldest, in the U.S. or abroad, or even in a job outside what most think of as the field of education, you will leave this place prepared and empowered to make a contribution. Students, families, colleagues, leaders, and communities are desperate for solutions, and I am optimistic because of all of you. So graduates of 2020 launched the first year of our second century with skill, partnership, and imagination. And I know those who follow you will look back at this time with pride and thankfulness. And now a few closing announcements. First, I wanna thank my colleagues for their tireless work throughout the year. The many faculty and staff who make this community so strong. And special thanks to the Teaching and Learning Lab and IT for their unending work supporting everyone as we move to remote learning and engagement. I also wanna thank Kevin Bohm and his colleagues in the Office of Student Affairs for their efforts to coordinate the celebrations. Thanks and appreciation also goes out to Rob Oatman and the rest of the IT team, and Barry Walsh, Elio Ruiz, and the rest of the team in marketing and communications for their support and skill putting together our celebrations today. I would also like to remind you of the robing and diploma ceremonies taking place the rest of the afternoon. I encourage our graduates and their family and friends to attend as many of the celebrations as possible and to cheer on your classmates. And so, to the HGSE graduates of 2020, especially at this moment in history, your contributions could not be needed more. You give me a sense of optimism and hope as you enter the world to share your ideas, your skills, and your dedication. 
So join me wherever you are in congratulating the 2020 graduating class of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And with that, I will close our school-wide commencement ceremony. You are graduating into a world that needs your thinking, your questioning, your care, and your love. Onward, together. Congratulations. I am so happy that you're graduating today. Now go and make the world better through education, one student at a time, as you lead the global education movement. Congratulations, class of 2020. This is your graduation. It's not in person, but y'all still should feel amazing for persevering through adversity. You made it. Congratulations, class of 2020. Woo woo! Y'all did it! should also all award yourselves additional degrees in grit and in resilience and in hope. Way to go, HGSC class of 2020. Give yourselves a pat on the back because you deserve it. We're all living in unusual times. Mother Nature agrees it's snowing behind me. You've got this, congratulations. You've learned to change the world. Now let's invent a bright new future for education. My sincerest congratulations to the class of 2020 for completing an incredibly discombobulating year. The courage, the adaptability, the perseverance you've shown in making it successfully to the finish line of this year will serve you very well in the challenging and somewhat uncertain times to come. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I don't think any of us could have imagined how this year would have ended, but it has been a wonderful journey with each and every one of you. Les agradezco todos los gran sacrificios que han hecho para cumplir esta meta y los que siguen haciendo para cambiar nuestro mundo. An amazing class of 2020. Felicitaciones. Here's to your next adventure and to keeping in touch with your forever professional home. Congratulations, keep moving. Congratulations to my students on making data count and building organizations that learn. And congratulations to everyone on your commencement. I can't wait to see all of the good you'll do in this world. I hope you celebrate big with your loved ones, but at home. So proud of you and can't wait to see what you accomplish next. Job well done, you're ready for your next step, and we're here for you. Congratulations on reaching this major milestone. Congratulations on your Harvard graduation. Congratulations. And so excited for all the ways you're about to change the world. Congratulations to everyone in the HJSE class of 2020. You all are truly spectacular. Congratulations. Congratulations, graduates. I believe you are stronger and more powerful than you could possibly imagine. What an incredible year it has been. You have worked so hard and you have completely and totally earned this. Go out and make the world a better place through education. You have been tested like no class before you. Be proud, be humble, and be well. I wish you the best as you move on to the next stage of your career. Congratulations. Truly, you are an inspiration for all of us. Thank you for everything you've taught us this year. <laughs> Wishing you all the very best of luck. You made it to one of the toughest times in recent history. You've made it. You're graduating from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I know the semester didn't end in the way we wanted to, but you've accomplished it. And even though we cannot be together in person, we are together in spirit. We can't wait to see your next contributions to the next generation of learners and children of the world.